OK, so we're going to solve this problem where we need to find the function f which satisfies this equation for all values of x, where a, b and c are some constants we'll need to find. And we're also given that f of 1 is negative 8 and f of 8 is negative 1, where f is a function mapping from the complex numbers to the complex numbers. So to get started, we could use this known value f of 1 is negative 8. And we could just substitute in here x is 1 into this functional equation. So we've got f of 1, just taking x is 1, is equal to a times 1 cubed plus b times 1 plus c. So we just have a plus b plus c. But we also know that f of 1 is negative 8. So now you can see we've got one equation, a plus b plus c is negative 8. This equation links all of our a, b and c. And we can do the same thing with our known value f of 8. So here we could substitute in x is 2. So we'd have 2 cubed gives us f of 8. And then we've got a times 2 cubed plus b times 2 plus c. So we've got 8a plus 2b plus c. And f of 8 is equal to negative 1. So we've got another equation now linking the values of a, b and c. And at this point, you might think that we've not got enough information to solve the problem and find the values of a, b and c. But if we remember that f is a function mapping from the complex numbers to the complex numbers, we actually have some extra values of x that we could substitute in so that x cubed would still be equal to 1 or would still be equal to 8. So we can look at our complex roots of unity now. So if we go for an extra value of x so that x cubed is 1, one of these would be we could take x equal to e to the 2 pi i over 3. So when we do x cubed then, we'd get e to the 2 pi i. And we know that e to the 2 pi i is actually just the number 1. There's another value as well here. We get another third root of unity, which would be x is e to the 4 pi i over 3. So basically our previous root squared. And again here, if we were to cube this, we'd get x cubed would be e to the 4 pi i, which would just be 1 squared, and this would also just be equal to 1. So we could substitute in both of these values now in place of x, and we would still get an expression to do with f of 1. So let's do this, and let's just call this one, we'll say e to the 2 pi i over 3, we'll define this to be omega, so that omega squared is e to the 4 pi i over 3 and this will just make things a little bit nicer to work with for us. So if we first of all start with x is equal to omega, then substituting in we've got f of omega squared, so just f of 1 still, is equal to a times omega cubed, and a times omega cubed is just a times 1, so we have a, but then it's plus b times omega plus c, and this is still just f of 1, so this is still equal to negative 8. So you can see we've now got a third equation linking a, b, and c. And if we do the same thing where we have x is equal to omega squared, then substituting in x is omega squared, we'd have omega to the power of 6, which is still equal to 1. It would just be 1 squared. So we'd have f of 1 is equal to a times, again, it would be omega to the power of 6, which is just 1. So we'd have a, and then plus b times omega squared plus c, and this is still equal to negative 8 because it's just equal to f of 1 using our known condition there. So now we've got a fourth equation for a, b, and c. And if you look at each of these two equations next to each other, it becomes clear that actually b should have to be equal to 0 because let's imagine we take this top equation and we subtract everything on each side of the bottom equation. So we have a minus a cancel, c minus c cancel, and the negative 8s cancel, and all we're left with is b times omega minus omega squared is equal to 0. Now, omega minus omega squared isn't 0, so then we have to have that b is 0. So we can conclude then that b is 0 based off these equations. So next we'll have a look at what happens with our other two values where we would still get f of 2, and then we'll see if we can work out the values of a and c and check this is all consistent. So now if we go for our known value f of 8 is negative 1, there's two more values of x that we can put in so that x cubed is 8. So the first one is if we have x is equal to 2 times omega, then x cubed will be 2 omega all cubed would just give us 8 because omega cubed is 1, it's the cube root of unity. So if we substitute in x is 2 omega into our functional equation now, we're going to get f of 8 
equals a times x cubed is just a times 8. So we get 8a plus, then it's b times 2 times omega. So I'll write this as 2b omega plus c. And then we know f of 8 is negative 1. So we've got another equation now. We just need to check that all of these equations are consistent with each other, especially if we're going with b equals 0 here. And then our second value of x that we need to try now is x is 2 times omega squared, because again, this would give us x cubed would be 2 cubed, 8, and then omega squared cubed, omega to the power of 6, would just be 1 again, because it would be 1 squared, effectively. So x cubed would still be 8. So then substituting in 2 omega squared in place of x here, we're going to get, once again, f of 8, and then a times x cubed is just 8a again, but now we've got b times 2 times omega squared, so plus 2b omega squared, and finally just plus c, and this is still known to be equal to negative 1, because it's just f of 8. So then we've got our sixth and final equation now using these two known values at 1 and 8. So now if we have b is 0, you can see the 2b omega term just disappears, and then each of the equations just become 8a plus c is negative 1. We've got 8a plus c is negative 1. And if you see over here as well, where we've got the b terms, if b is 0, all of these equations essentially reduce down to just two equivalent equations. So first of all, we've got a plus c equals negative 8 from all of our f of 1 equations, and all of our f of 8 equations reduce down to 8a plus c equals negative 1. So now we can see that actually these problem is well posed and we don't have any contradictions here from having these, even though we've got six equations for three unknowns, all of the equations are consistent with each other as long as b is zero. So then it's just a simple matter here, we could take the second equation and subtract the first equation, both sides from this, this would give us 7a equals 7, so we would get a equals 1, and then you could substitute this back in, you'd see c is negative 9. So these are our values of a and c. So then we can say that f of x cubed is just going to be, with a is 1, it's just going to be 1 times x cubed, so just x cubed, b is 0, and then plus c gives us minus 9. But then remember, we're actually trying to find the original function f. So we could just substitute here, instead of x cubed, we could substitute in a different variable, or we could just say that f of z then is equal to z minus 9. So this would work then for all complex values of z. Now we've managed to find our function f, which satisfies all of these. We've also checked carefully that it is indeed a well-posed problem and that we don't get any contradictions from our six equations.